Highway 221 in South Georgia. No one knew where Nikki was. It took a while before a deputy found her car parked off to the side of the road. When I pulled in behind her vehicle, she was sitting in the driver's seat. I thought she just propped up on the console, maybe talking on the phone. The victim was in blue scrubs. Her left leg was outside the vehicle and her right hand was a cell phone. She was shot on the left side of her face and then was shot again in the neck. And uh, death happened very quickly at that point. Nikki was 28 years old. Nikki's dad got there as fast as he could. He still had no idea his daughter was dead. There was like dozens of cars up and down side the highway. I looked over and I saw her car and the driver's door was open. And I saw one of her feet. I just collapsed in the middle of the street. She was apple of her daddy's eye. I used to fix her hair because I told her mama I didn't want to cut her hair. She said, well, you can get up in the morning and fix it. So I did. I, I learned how to braid hair. I even learned how to do a French braid. She liked that one. We're a rural area. We do not have this type of crime. People are good working folks here. This is probably the epitome of a, a strange murder that I've ever worked and probably the most evil that I've ever seen. Her name was Nikki, Nikki Orvin, till she married into the Bamberg family. That's her husband, Damon, and their two great kids. Her mother-in-law, Sonia, is the one in the middle. Nikki met Damon when she was working as a cashier at Walmart. He was there doing some shopping with his mom. Sonia liked Nikki from the very start. It was Sonia who initiated the meeting and like interviewed Nikki. Are you married? How old are you? You know, where do you live? You know, all this kind of stuff. She told Sonia that she was divorced and had a little boy. But Sonia said, you see that guy over there? She was pointing at Damon. He likes you. You might have to help him swim, though. I think I can take care of that. <laughs> she was a young lady who had a child earlier on. She was trying to find herself a husband, settle down, have her babies, get a job, and have a decent life for herself. Just like Nikki. Damon had been married before to a girl named Andrea. Nikki told me, you know, here was someone who was willing to love her and her kid and a bonus of a grandma right there. They seemed very happy to begin with, you know, the newlywed phase. As an investigator, you have a puzzle, and all the pieces are laying everywhere. Your job is to grab piece by piece and put it together until you have the whole story. We photograph everything. There was a couple of shots to the back of the vehicle. A bullet had grazed the top roof of her car. The rear window was shattered out. They figured out it was a 45 caliber gun that killed Nikki from the shells they found. But that was it. That's all they had. Until daylight.
It was lucky Nikki'd been on the phone with her dad because that gave them a place to start. We knew the shot had to be fired while she was traveling. So the big thing is now, where did the shot come from? We started walking back up the road and there we found the ejected shell casings. They ejected onto the shoulder of the road. Therefore, they had to come out the right side of the vehicle. So that meant that whoever was shooting at Nikki was in the passenger seat of the car. Someone else had to be driving. When Nikki married Damon, they'd only known each other four months, and she hadn't spent much time with his family. There was a lot she didn't know about the Bambergs. When I first met Sonia, to begin with, actually, she tried to sort of stay back in the picture a little. But it didn't take her long to come to the front. Nikki got pregnant right away. And Damon and Sonia couldn't have been happier. After she had her kid, when she started seeing the dynamics, that's when things started falling apart. And she was like, okay, what did I get into? When they were at my house, I would ask Nikki something. Sonia would answer. And if I asked Damon something, most of the time she would answer also. She was the take control person. She answered for everything. Nikki, no, I can't wear that shirt to school. Sonia insisted that they all live together in her house. One big happy family. Damon thought that was a great idea. But for Nikki, that house was getting smaller by the minute. Come here. Oh, that's my boy. I said, why don't you and Damon move out? And she said, well, Mama, I've asked him to do that. And she said, he says he will not move out or will not make his mother move out because she had to have three jobs when he was a child to support him and his brother, so he would not do that to her. Their relationship was not your usual mother and son relationship. It's true. Sonia acted like she was married to David, not Nikki. You don't walk around in your underwear in front of your adult son. You don't walk in the bathroom when they're taking a shower. It's your adult son. So her boundaries were blurred. They were gone. Hey, baby. Hey, mama. What you doing? Playing my game. Looks fun. It is, mama. You winning? so far. Mm. I don't know if they ever went as far as having intercourse, but I do know that emotionally it was that tight. Mm -hmm. They often slept in the same bed, and I believe that even continued while he and Nikki were married, which of course made her uncomfortable. Whatever Mama said, and he called her the mother person, whatever the mother person said, then that's what was the truth. And whenever she wanted something, she called herself the mommy. When he was away from his mother, he was a different person. So lucky to have a mama like As soon as you went to his mom, yes. it was whatever mommy said. Yeah. Nikki knew she didn't stand a chance with those two. She and Damon would never have a place of their own. Doesn't feel good, does it? But what Nikki couldn't live with was the way Damon treated the kids. Maybe you'll learn next time. He would make Gabriel hold things in his arms and then hold them out until his arms were fatigued. It was almost a type of torture. Where the hell do you think you're going? I'm leaving you, Damon. No, you're not. Yes, I am. Your mom is crazy. They'd been married just two years, but Nikki couldn't get out of there fast enough. There's no way she was going to let her kids be around those people, even if they were family. She filed for divorce and asked for full custody. The less time they had to spend with their father and grandmother, the better.
So where was Damon Bamberg while Nikki was lying dead in her car? Well, he was at the sheriff's station, 20 miles away, filing an assault charge against her. I was coming in on night shift that night. Got my patrol car, walked in the door, and there's Damon and Sonia, and Damon sitting there holding his hand. Damon? Sonny, how y'all doing today? Not too good. My ex-wife. As usual, Damon's mother was right by his side. Sonia, her and Damon was always together, and he would always look at her as to what kind of answer should I give him. Nikki didn't know it, but Damon and Sonia had quite a reputation around town. I've been doing this right close to 15 years now, and I guess 10 of those years I, I dealt with uh, Sonia and Damon. Damon always struck me as really strange. He would say, hey, Damon, how you doing? And he would just look at you with a real cold, blank stare. You had to sit there and kind of just stare at him a minute to wait for him to speak to you. Sonia was a little stranger. She liked to be in control. She demanded that control. She demanded it. They were just really strange in the big boys. Damon advised me that he was at the grocery store exchanging the children. It was Damon and Sonia's weekend to have the kids. I'm so happy to see you. Big boys go first. They were arguing, of course. I mean, they seemed to always argue. What is this crap? He told me that when she handed him the medicine, she wrenched his hand up in the bag, injuring him. He said, that's when I went to the store and got me a bag of ice and put it on my hand, and we drove straight here to the sheriff's office to make that report. So I was sitting there writing this information down, and my dispatcher walks up behind me and says, come with me for a minute. That's his ex-wife down the side of the road, Jeff Davis County. She's been shot. I looked right at Damon and I said, you're gonna have to stay here right now. I've got something going on with Bob and your ex-wife. I said, by the way, do you give me consent to search your vehicle? It's fine with me. Fine with you. Sure, sure, I want you to do that. You want me to, want me yes, to search Yes, sir, your absolutely. Okay. I never had anybody just say, I want you to. By now, the boys were asleep in the car. It had been a while since they had been picked up at the store. I didn't find anything. Nothing that would suggest that a crime had been committed of any type. When they told Sonia that Nikki had been murdered, you'd think she'd be surprised or sad. After all, Nikki was part of the family. Her reaction was the same old cold blank stare that I've always seen for 10 years. There was no emotion. And what about Nikki's loving ex-husband? Like mother, like son. There was no emotion, none. It was like, hmm. They didn't ask a single question about where it happened or how Nikki died. Maybe they were in shock. Something just ain't right. They found a report now. This happened an hour ago. They're here now. Something ain't stirring the Kool-Aid, so to speak. We didn't have that smoking gun yet. But, you know, we can only hold somebody for so long. So I said, y'all free to go for now. My advice to you is to go home and don't move. Just stay right there. You're probably thinking what everybody was thinking, that Damon and Sonia were getting away with murder. But they have an alibi, and there's no way they would have killed Nikki in front of her kids. Or would they? Nikki Bamberg has been murdered. Her ex-husband Damon and his mother Sonia are the two prime suspects. And they are acting 
well, strange. But it's not a crime to be strange. In fact, they're actually looking more and more innocent than guilty. There were footprints directly outside her door. They closely resembled the shoes that Damon had on at the time. But they weren't. And they weren't lying about what happened at the convenience store either. The only thing I did find at the grocery store was the tape, very poor quality, of a man coming into the store holding his wrist. He said he walked in here. Clark said he walked in here. Tape showing that somebody's holding their hand, so that's got to be it. Got to be him. I was at the grocery store viewing tapes and talking to people and getting names, and I was just trying to find somebody that seen something. Just trying to find that needle in the haystack, I guess you'd say. So if Damon and Sonya really killed Nikki, where was the gun they used? Both Sonya and Damon are proficient with firearms. Damon had been a prison guard. And of course, his mother would go to the range with him and they would shoot. And they both had obtained firearms over the years. The Bamberg family owned guns. Lots of guns. But when their house was searched, guess what? No guns. We had a couple guns here we wanted to pawn. All right. Their guns was in a pawn shop by having a pawn ticket and saying, I couldn't do this. I have no firearm. I couldn't commit this murder with a handgun because <laughs> it's just not available to me. Right here. Come on, boys. No, Maggie, these boys are staying with us. No, they're not. Come here. These are my boys. Yeah. Damon? Damon? When Nikki first filed for divorce, Damon and Sonya were mad. She wanted the full custody of the kids so that Nikki could have no input into their life. Give up her kids to Sonya and Damon? Nikki wasn't going to let that happen. It took a year and a half. But she was the one who finally got custody of her boys. Oh You're taking away Sonya's stuff. You're taking away her grandkids. And there's no way Sonya was going to give up any of that. Nikki, she, she can be replaced. But all that other stuff, no. It was her stuff. The divorce was also going to cost Damon some money. Money that he didn't have. He just got ordered to pay child support. Oh my God, he has no job. Well, one way to eliminate is to eliminate the payee. Sorry, she's not going to live to draw the first check of child support. More than one person heard Sonya swear she'd kill Nikki if she ever got custody of the kids. But that's how she always talked. They did talk about killing people like it was nothing. They would talk about how, oh, it'd be easy. We could just put the body over here and put lime on it because it, it would eat the body away and no one would know. I talked to Damon about it, and he said, oh, she was just venting. We would, she'd never do anything like that. Then, a witness came forward and said that Sonya actually had tried to hire him to kill Nikki. They were at a friend's house, and they offered this friend to do the contract killing for the sum of twenty-five thousand dollars. You know Nikki's been a problem for a while. Come on, murder. And he basically told them they were crazy. Come on, son. Uh, he must have figured they were kidding. Some joke. At this point, what investigators really needed was some solid evidence like the gun that was used to kill Nikki. Well, the week after her murder, someone reported his gun missing. It was Damon's brother, Scott. It's been about a week, man. His brother saying, not only did I have a gun stolen, 
but it is the same caliber you're looking for. Sonya's boys didn't get together too often. But Damon and his mother knew Scott kept a gun in his truck. They could have stolen it any time before the murder. It made me just as happy as I possibly could be that now we show the Bambergs having access to a 45 caliber semi-automatic weapon. And what about their alibi for the night of Nikki's murder? At the sheriff's office, Damon said he didn't have enough time to kill Nikki and then get there to file the assault charge. Well, it was time to put that alibi to the test by driving from the murder scene to the sheriff's station. We was able to get there at 90 miles an hour to the sheriff's office a reasonable time to show that not only was it possible, it was plausible at that point. Goodbye alibi. Finally, there's enough evidence to make an arrest. They are known to carry firearms everywhere they go, so I wasn't taking any chances. So I went to the door and I, I knocked on it. and. And Damon come to the door. I said, I need you to step out here. You're under arrest. You're being charged with murder. And I remember Sonya being in the background, and her eyes just got big, and I said, and you need to step out here too now. Sonya, she had no emotion. She thought, y'all ain't going to get me. I'm stronger and smarter than y'all are. You ain't going to get me. They were very cocky and very sure of their self. They thought they would get away with it. I wanted to kill them. I really did. I, I wanted to kill them. But no, I promised the DA as long as they kept them locked up, I would let the uh, system do their thing. If they ever let them out, their ass is mine. I swear that to God. <laughs> So how long will Damon and Sonya be in jail? Without more evidence, they could be out any day. All they have to do is keep their mouths shut, but they won't. Damon Bamberg and his mother Sonya are sitting in jail, charged with Nikki Bamberg's murder. They know the evidence that got them there is thin at best and figure they'll be out any time now. So what's a few days behind bars? I do know that while they were in jail, he would walk by her every morning and she would always say, good morning, son. Like it was nothing. Like, like being in jail was nothing. They never said, oh no, we're in trouble. They talked about getting custody even when they're sitting in jail. That when they got out, there was no legal reason they couldn't get custody, and this is what they was going to do with the kids, and this is where they was going to go, and this is what they was going to eat. Life had just been put on hold because they were not going to be convicted. Even in jail, Sonya was all about control, but she didn't really get how the system works. Mama, hey, it's me, Sonya. Like when she was on the phone with her mom, she didn't stop to think that someone else might be listening in. I listened to a great number of telephone calls that these two were making out to the grandmother. You listen to 15 minutes of conversation with anybody on a regular basis, you get to learn them very quickly. Sonia is pure evil. Hi, honey. Yeah. What happened to the lawyer today? He said that this type of court case would run about $25,000 for your lawyer and 25000 for DJ's. Did okay. you have any way of raising that money? And I said, Sonia does not. And I said, yes, we I do. do. You do? Yes, I do. How? 
Do you remember back in December when I talked to you about the insurance I was taking? Yes. Unbelievable. Sonia actually took out a life insurance policy on Nikki after she and Damon were separated and made herself the beneficiary. Who does that? I need your credit card, honey. Here you go, Mom. Thank you, dear. Sonia gets online and buys an insurance policy, electronically pays for it. So there's basically a paper trail at this point. Nikki had no idea there was a $50,000 price tag on her head. $1,000. And all she had to do was die to, for her to obtain the money. Now there were two reasons to want Nikki dead. Custody and money. Sonia and Damon were used to being together 24-7. Being in jail and in separate cells was probably the longest they'd ever been apart. They were both starting to go a little nuts. People, on the average, like to discuss their crimes. Sound it out, see what's going right, what's went wrong. She's in jail, so she's wanting to talk. Sonia's mom had some advice for her daughter. Keep your mouth shut. You and DJ should not even talk in your sleep, and especially to the people in the room with you. Especially DJ, the guy they put in with him, is probably a first-class thing. They all are. Yeah. And so don't talk to anybody. Nobody in there is your friend. Sonia doesn't listen to anyone. Uh, hey, Burtis. How you doing? I'm fine. It's hot today, and It's ridiculous. And anyway, she'd already made a friend. Uh, Burtis Taylor, who was a prisoner in the jail but had lots of freedom as a trustee. Trustees clean the jail up and, and make sure it's presentable. If they wash clothes, etc. I mean, it's like any other household. You got to do certain things. Got to be done every day. Sonia was in cell three, and Damien was in cell nine, and she had asked me to pass a letter from her to Damien. So that's how we initially started getting to know each other and talking, and then it led from there. Boys, I'm just so worried about those little boys. Yeah, I know. I know. But they need me. Burtis Taylor is a con. He's a very charming, charismatic con man. But Burtis didn't know who he was dealing with. Sonia can be very convincing. They're going to figure out this is so wrong. Curtis, you got to help me here. She got inside my head so fast. She was that good. I really believe they had an innocent woman locked up. I really did. By the way, my mom sent in some more cupcakes. Are you enjoying those? Oh, yeah, yeah. Two weeks after meeting Sonia, I realized that the con man had been con. Totally con. You don't mess with Burtis Taylor. And he was going to prove it by bringing Sonia down. He come to me and he said, John, you won't believe what she's telling me. He said, would you like to, me to get some more information? I says, if you get information and give it to me, that's great. If you want to do it, and if you want to run another one of your cons, you do it. I've arrested him numerous times. He likes me, I like him. It's kind of, we got a good working relationship going. He talks to her, then he come talks to me. The months that I spent getting inside of Sonia's head, the, the, the more I learn about her. There was an escape plan. Sonia believed if they ever got out of jail and made it to Oregon, we could not extradite from Oregon. Where that idea ever come from, I'll never understand it. The more I was getting to know her, then she started throwing the hints like, could I trust you to do me a favor? And I'm like, yeah. Hey. Burtis. What you doing? Uh, are you still getting out in three days? Burtis, he was leading her to believe that he was going to be getting out of jail very soon and to be able to do whatever 
she bid him to do. I need you to go to my house. <laughs> there was evidence buried in Sonia's chicken coop. And she needed Burtis to dig it up. He described her backyard and then where I needed to look and then where I needed to dig and what I needed to get up and destroy and get rid of it before they found it. There couldn't be any mistakes. So Sonia drew a map of where Burtis should dig. Of course, the map ended up in the hands of John Lee. Sonia had told Burtis that she didn't believe that we would dig through a livestock pen to find evidence. She was so wrong. We went out with a metal detector and a shovel. Metal detectors does not work extremely well in a chicken coop because you have fencing. But there was an area that we could isolate to show that there's something here other than just the wire. That's right. Magazines and bullets for a 45 caliber handgun. Just like the one used to kill Nikki. And right where Sonya said they'd be. These two weren't going to get out of jail anytime soon. And they were really starting to miss each other. What's going on, baby? He loved his mom. Him and his mom was, was really close. Real, real close. Sometimes I thought it was a little too close. She'd ask how he was doing, and he'd ask how she was doing. It. She would send letters to him, and, and he would send letters to her. And At night time, he would say, would you tell my mom I love her and I wish I was in her arms? And then she would say, go back and tell my son it won't be long. I'll give him relief. I love my mama as good as anybody in the world. But, you know, but uh, I, I don't carry on about her like he did his. Every night she would say, can you go back there and tell him that, that I love him and that, that I'll be in his arms again and blah, blah, blah. I mean, it was awful. It was off. It got to the point to where I couldn't even stand to go to her cell. Creepy, huh? Poor Burtis. Can he hang in there till he gets the truth out of Sonya? If not, Nikki's killers could go free. After months in jail, Sonya still doesn't know that Burtis Taylor is playing her for a fool. With his help, new evidence is piling up. But his con won't be complete until he gets Sonya to confess to Nikki's murder. I made her think I was, I was it. I was there for her. I would buy her a drink. I mean, I was doing anything I could. She started trusting me more. Now, you want me to help you, I'll help you. I, I, but you I got do. to get I honest, honest with me. Burtis was tired of playing Mr. Nice Guy and tried a new approach with Sonya. He got tough. I am telling you the truth. You I, I'm not lying truth. to you. You ain't told me the truth. You need to get your ass in there and sit on that bunk. And when you can get real, I'll get real. I said, look, I know you did it. You know you did it. Why can't you just open up and be honest with me? And that's when the tears started so coming. We and, went and We got rid of Nikki. Nikki had to go. Oh, my Lord, Sam. <laughs> We had to get rid of her. There it is. The truth. Who would have thought Sonya would ever give up control and finally start talking? But Damon, he couldn't keep a secret even if his mama told him to. I feel real bad about what I've done. And he said, I'm going to hell. He said, there's no forgiveness. I said, forgiveness for what? He said, for killing her. I said, what are you talking about? He said, I've done it. He said, I, I killed her. I killed their mama. They'll have to grow up the rest of their life without their mama. She said it had to be done. It had to be done for the grandbaby. He didn't think that he would have uh, got caught, you know, that he would have got custody of his kids. They planned it. I mean, it was premeditated. It was, it was thought out. Sonia admitted that to me. It was marked on the calendar. They know what day, what time, how they was going to handle it. 
Hello. Nikki, I'll see you at the store. Without knowing it, Nikki had given Damon and Sonya the perfect time and place to kill her. You want them at the... There was going to be exchange uh, of the children at a public location. So they chose a convenience store. As Nikki got her kids ready to visit their dad, she thought she had her whole life ahead of her. But Nikki was wrong. Her family had been planning her murder for months. And this was the night it would happen. Her mother told me later on that she had tried to get her not to take those boys to them or not have anything to do with them by herself. She said, if you'll call me, I'll go with you. But she was too independent, so she could do it. I always had a sense of fear when it came to Damon. I don't know what it was, but there was something about him that terrified me. Nikki might have been worried if she'd known Damon almost killed his first wife. Andrea had wanted them to get a place of their own, too. And the next thing I knew is I had a machete to my throat. Then I told him, I said, if you're going to kill me, kill me now. And he didn't. Nikki wasn't going to be so lucky. My boys. That night at the store, something just didn't feel right. Sonia was in a hurry to get the kids in the car, and Damon was being more difficult than usual. My kids don't need this. Yes, they do. Typical, Damon didn't want to take some medicine the kids needed for the weekend. These two weren't going to get along well, and the public location seemed to make absolutely no difference that there was going to be an argument. My damn arm! They were fussing about the kid's medicine or something, and she grabbed his arm and pushed him. He was never going to listen. As Nikki drove away, her tough guy ex-husband headed into the convenience store, pretending he was hurt. He went inside the store and got a bag of ice to put on his hand. Damon had to make sure that he was seen on the surveillance video and that the cashier remembered him, all part of the alibi. But this was costing them valuable time. And what was grandma doing while Damon was in the store? She was telling the kids about the fun game they were about to play. Okay, boys, we're going to play a little game called Pirate. I want you to put this up over your eyes where you can't see anything. We're going to play Pirates, and therefore we're going to blindfold you. Can you see? No, no. good boy. And, you know, you're going to hear some noises and stuff, but you don't worry about it because we're having fun. This is a game. Pirates of the Caribbean had just come out, and they were infatuated with Pirates of the Caribbean, so they wore little head rags, you know, like Pirates. Damon, he had uh, like a pirate tag, you know, the skull and crossbones on the front of his vehicle. And therefore, the children bought into it. Can you see anything? Can you see me? All right, let's get going. This is going to be great. Leave it to Sonya who used to work for Child Protective Services to come up with a kid-friendly plan like that. She thought of everything, even earplugs for the boys. What kind of twisted mind could come up with something like this and involve kids? He said he got in the car and left and followed her. By now, it had been a few minutes since Nikki left Damon at the store. She was getting away, and that was screwing up their plan. Sonia told me it was supposed to happen way before it did. As soon as they picked the kids up, they would have followed her, and as soon as she got out of town, they would have pulled up side of her, shot her, bam. That would have been the end of it. She went off the road wrecked. Somehow, Nikki had got ahead of them. It got way out of hand. Nikki was on the telephone with her father. We were on the phone talking, and right out of the blue, she just stopped and said, I think somebody's shooting at me. 
They just shot my window out. And I said, honey, you need to run. You need to get to somewhere where some people are. You need to get to somebody's house. You need to get to a store. I said, run. He said that, that he was leaning out the window, shooting at the car. Said he was hoping to hit her then. It's blowing my mind because never in a million years have I ever even dreamed of killing anybody. She didn't, obviously didn't know they were behind her coming at a high rate of speed. They had to be at a high rate of speed to even catch her. He had redone the motor in that thing, and it would go. When the shot rang out, the rear window shattered. Therefore, she couldn't see and make a positive identification of who was indeed shooting at her. The worst part about the whole thing is that the two boys had to have been there. I wonder what Damon and Sonya were saying to them as they were trying to chase her down. All right, boys, you ready to be pirates? To hear those gunshots, what could have been going through their head? What is my dad doing? Here, shoot! I didn't hear any gunshots. No, I, I tried to think back that I hear something like that. I didn't hear any glass breaking. And it was like the line was still open. And she wasn't saying anything. Nikki lost cell service. And it's probably a good thing that her dad never heard what happened next. She pulled off the road at the first light she saw, thinking it was a house. But it wasn't. He said that when she pulled over, he walked up to the driver's side and shot her. Said she was leaned over the passenger seat, you know, trying to open the passenger door. If only Nikki hadn't pulled off the road. She had to look at him, and no death was imminent. I think Damon pulled the trigger, but I think his mama told him to and he would do anything that his mama said. If Sonya told Damien to cut his wrist, Damien would cut his wrist with no questions. I do not feel that Damien would be capable of completing this face-to-face -face murder without Sonya standing there saying, do it, son. This is the right thing to do. How could Damon and Sonya ever kill Nikki in front of her kids? How could they be that cruel? All the hours that I spent with her, I never seen no remorse, but that one day of her crying, and she wasn't crying in remorse for Nikki. She was crying because she was in the situation to where she wasn't raising her grandbabies. Obviously, Sonya hadn't learned her lesson. Now she was talking about killing Nikki's mom since she was the one raising the boys. When she got out, she was still going to kill Rita, and she still was going to kill the, some more people there that had really messed her up and all. And her plans were not to stop there. Her plans were to go on and on. Burtis Taylor's good. He did it. He got the confession out of Sonya, and Don Ellis got the story out of Damon, too. Damon and Sonya were going to trial for murder. My opinion is totally death penalty 100%, and I don't think that would be good enough. I think it would need to be slowed down to where it lasted about a week, because you can't get no worse a crime. Can't get no worse a crime. Nikki's ex-husband and mother-in-law were tried together. Of course, they do everything together. It was a long trial. It was emotional. I met the boys, and um, they were so young and uh, precious little boys, and it was kind of difficult to see them without a mother. Damon and Sonya didn't testify in their own defense. They had no defense. It was bad to just have to sit there and look at them, knowing what they had done. He looked at me a lot. 
I guess, to see what my expression was going to be about things that were being told. She never looked at me. They made, made very little eye contact between each other. They were going to be united in this crime. There was going to be no betrayal between either of them. The jury broke a record in Nikki's case. It took them just 38 minutes to find Damon and Sonia guilty of murder. At no point did they show any emotion whatsoever. When they were convicted, there was finally some show of emotion. And it was not of remorse. It was, oh, Lord, life has changed. We're going to prison. When the sentencing hearing came around, the judge let me say something. And I remember telling him, I hope he dies screaming. And then I pointed at her and I said, I hope you have to watch. I'm glad I was a part of putting them to in the last pair of handcuffs that they're going to wear on the outside of a jailhouse. If they ever were to come up for a hearing for parole, I'll be there with that family because it didn't impact just them, it impacted everybody. In the end, Sonia lost all of her control over Damon and the grandkids. She was given a life sentence, and she will die behind bars. If there was a decision to be made to me of who was most guilty, Sonia Bamberg would be the top of the heap. And Damon? You'd think he'd be lost in prison without his mother to tell him what to do. But now he has the guards for that, for the rest of his life. All I can say is thank God my mother wasn't like that. Nikki's dad will probably never get over losing his daughter. With the good Lord's help, maybe we'll learn to live with it. And that's all I've tried to do since then, is live with it. Nikki didn't get a chance to raise her boys, but they're happy living with her mom. Just take it a day at the time, that's all you can do now. Nikki's life insurance money went to her children, but that'll never make up for the loss of their mother. <laughs>